Hello, everybody. This is my full ham workhorse 2 electronic fluorescent lamp ballast, and it's a pretty good indicator of most electronic fluorescent lamp ballasts. It's instant start, starts the lamp by shoving a really high voltage through it, and it works fine. Lamps aren't going to last as long as with a magnetic ballast or an electronic ballast that does program start, but it works. Uh, most electronic fluorescent lamp ballasts today, uh, they call themselves rapid start, but really they are instant start. They do apply cathode heating, but they still apply that really super high uh, voltage across the lamp to start it. Well, in today's video, we're not looking at this ballast. We are going to look at another electronic ballast that I recently got. Uh, I bought it off a member of Lighting Gallery. And it's actually a really early uh, electronic ballast. In fact, it's a good example of one of the earliest electronic fluorescent lamp ballasts for mains-powered fixtures uh, that saw mainstream use. And here it is. This is a Sylvania Quicktronic QTP 1x32TA. 120. It is an electronic rapid start ballast for F32 T8, F25 T8, or F17 T8 lamps. And this was made in 2002-2003. But here's the thing. Sylvania did not make this ballast. This has actually been a rebranded, relabeled ballast made by Motorola of a design going back to the 1990s. Motorola made some of the earliest electronic ballasts, at least for the North American market. And I'm not including uh, ballasts for battery-powered fluorescent lanterns. They go back to the 60s. But for main power, but for mains-powered fixtures, Motorola made some of the first ones for the North American market in the 90s. And uh, in 2003, I think it was, Sylvania actually took over Motorola's lighting division and for quite a while just kept making Motorola's ballast and uh, literally sticking their name on it. Underneath this label is actually the old, the original Motorola label. Um, I would have liked to have removed this Sylvania label to expose the Motorola label, but I can't do that while preserving the Motorola label. It's just going to get destroyed. Uh, but yeah, this is a Motorola designed ballast uh, with a design going back to the 90s, a very early electronic ballast. And this is a cool ballast. It is a rapid start ballast. And one of the first things you notice is that the open circuit voltage is only 350 volts. Uh, most uh, electronic ballasts uh, are, most modern electronic ballasts are 600 volts, if not more, at least for four foot lamps. So the difference between these early ballasts and modern electronic ballasts is that these do not start the lamp instantly. The lamp actually has a little bit of time for the cathodes to heat up and for it to properly start. From what I've read, uh, lamp start on these ballasts is actually not too different from a magnetic rapid start ballast, which is really cool. And this ballast comes from a time when the magnetic ballast was still king. These were very much a specialty item in their time. Uh, very few people actually opted to buy a ballast like this when the magnetic ballasts were tried and true and probably cheaper. Um, the benefits you did get with this was a ballast that was going to stay quiet because it's, you know, it's not magnetic and it's going to be more efficient. Now, when I say quiet, um, the funny thing is, is that uh, the very earliest magnetic ballasts, some of them made by uh, Thorne in the UK and other companies, um, due to the nature of them being electronic, they actually needed an inductor for power factor correction rather than a magnetic ballast using a, using a capacitor. But a consequence is that that power factor correction inductor would buzz and so these earliest electronic ballasts would end up buzzing like a magnetic ballast 
Motorola was one of the first uh, to make an active power factor correction circuit uh, rather than just using a passive inductor. And so these ballasts are completely silent. And it was a very novel design for the time. And it's the design that all modern electronic fluorescent lamp ballasts ended up using. But Motorola was a pioneer. If we look at the label here, it actually gives the uh, former Motorola part number for this ballast, M1RLT81LL120. And it lists the lamp types, F32T8, F25T8, and F17T8 lamps. And it also lists three other sizes of lamps. Those are U-Bend lamps. Reportedly, um, these do not like... Uh, energy-saving krypton-filled uh, F32T8 lamps, uh, just like the F40T12, which has a 34-watt energy-saving version. The F32T8 actually has the same thing. There's actually two of them, one that uses 30 watts and one that uses 25 watts. And just like the 34-watt uh, F40T12, they, are, they have a modification made to the gas fill, which inherently makes them uh, harder to ignite. So, reportedly, these ballasts don't work well with those energy-saving lamps because of the lower open circuit voltage. If we look here, we have a line current of 0.26 amps, high power factor, sound rated A, and it was made in the USA. Very nice. Sylvania did make their own electronic ballast before they bought Motorola's lighting division. Uh, they sucked. They were garbage. And that's probably why Sylvania chose to buy Motorola's lighting division. Uh, so they could get access to Motorola's patents, Motorola's much better electronic ballast. And Sylvania basically built upon Motorola's designs for all of their future ballasts. And I think Sylvania today is one of the biggest players in electronic fluorescent lamp ballasts. Of course, now today, fluorescent lamps are pretty much all obsolete. Even the, uh, even the electronic T8 and, and high output T5 ones. You'll notice uh, something Motorola did. They uh, stick the wires into these little wire grip insert things. And I think the purpose of that was that these ballasts could be drop-in replacements for existing magnetic ballasts. You basically clip the wires at the magnetic ballast and uh, strip those wires and then insert those wires straight into the terminals. You can see. Unlike modern electronic ballasts, this ballast is in a full-size case like a magnetic ballast would come in. However, judging by the weight of it, and it's not very heavy at all, it is not filled with tar. So, uh, and I've seen pictures before of these taken apart anyway. We could open this up and there's just a circuit board inside here. So, if this thing ever failed, um, and once in a while these do fail, um, and there's a non-zero chance that when these do fail, it's actually bad capacitors, just because, you know, being from the late 90s, early 2000s, that's a possibility. You can actually open these up and recap them if you wanted to. So, I'm excited to test this thing. Um, I actually have my shop light, my F40T12 shop light, sitting right here. Uh, I just finished uh, using it with the video of the radionic, terrible magnetic F40T12 ballast. So, let's install this ballast, let's grab some lamps, and uh, let's do some testing. I'm excited to take a look at a vintage, early electronic ballast. There she is installed. Let's put a lamp in and see how it works. I do have one F32T8 lamp, so I will put it in and then we'll power this thing on. This is a Sylvania Octron XPS 32 watt 5000 Kelvin. It's an 850 phosphor. Very nice, pretty, modern, efficient phosphor. Uh, E0G, I don't know if that's a day code of 2020 maybe. But let's power it on and see what this ballast is like. I'm very interested to see what it behaves like, particularly the startup behavior. Is it going to be like most modern 
electronic rapid start ballasts that basically have an instant start or is it actually going to have a true rapid start startup like a magnetic ballast? Let's find out. Oh, interesting. So, uh, what I saw out of the corner of my eye was that the cathode actually, it, it almost had a very quick preheat um, type behavior. I saw that cathode glow pretty brightly, and then the lamp started. Ballast works great. Lamp looks great. Let's, let's start it up again and, and observe that again. Yeah, it's almost preheat like it very briefly preheats the cathodes before it starts. So I wonder what the methodology methodology is. Is it actually programmed to briefly preheat the cathodes before it starts? Or is there just an inherent delay before it applies the high voltage across the lamp? Um, or is it simply a matter of the lamp won't start until the cathodes get hot enough? I don't know. Very interesting, though. See that again. Yeah, you can just barely see the uh, cathodes glow. Now I'm wondering, what's our power like? 28 watts. 0.22 amps. And nearly perfect power factor. So yeah, pushes the lamp with most of its rated current. Now I'm, I'm really curious, so I'm going to do something a little naughty. I'm going to unplug one end of the lamp and just plug in one end. And uh, I want to see if, if the cathode glows indefinitely. Oh wow, look at that. That's a very bright cathode glow. Wow. Does it do the same for the other side? Ooh, 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 ooh. That was not good for the lamp. Holy cow. That pushed a ton of current through that cathode. Ooh, that's really bad for the lamp. <laughs> but then it settles down. So, it seems it briefly pushes a little extra current through the cathode. Enough that it actually strikes an arc across it, which isn't really that good for it. Um, and then it strikes. Oof. Sorry, lamp. That was not good for this lamp. <laughs> so, what I'm gathering here is that the cathodes are heated from a single constant current source. Uh, so if one cathode goes open and there's only one being connected, that one connected cathode is going to get double the current than if both cathodes are working. That is an odd, uh, that is an odd design, not an optimal design in my opinion, very strange. Um, I don't know if that's a design deficiency, just a, a, a consequence of the uh, sort of old design of this ballast. Or is it a reasonable design trait because if, if the lamp is working but it has a blown cathode then it might struggle to start but maybe by pushing the one working cathode with extra current it gives it a better chance of starting maybe? So maybe it is for the greater good? I don't know but very interesting design. So I'm going to try something else now. Um, I have this end properly connected, but this end only connected by one pin. So it's simulating an otherwise good lamp with a blown cathode. So let's see what it does. And it still starts just fine. So what I'm, another thing I'm gathering from this is that there is a programmed delay uh, in this ballast design. Perhaps not programmed as in digital programming, but perhaps just some sort of uh, PTC timer type thing. Either way, there has been a designed delay in starting. It preheats the cathodes first, and then it applies the high voltage across the lamp. Very interesting. Um, I like that. That's, that's a very nice starting uh, design. Uh, it's pretty much program start, just a bit quicker. Um, 
but because it shoves obviously uh, a little extra current uh, across the cathodes uh, before it applies that high voltage, it, it really negates any uh, consequences from the fact that the preheating is very brief. So, and, and it's just very unique. I, I like this ballast. I like it quite a bit. Okay, now I am simulating a lamp that's good but has two blown cathodes. See if it starts. It does not. So kind of a nice trait of these Motorola ballasts versus modern electronic ballasts is that the open circuit voltage is relatively low. And uh, while that means it won't start lamps unless they have uh, apparently at least one good cathode, um, it'll never instant start the lamps. A lower open circuit voltage is generally better for the lamps. There's, there's no risk of instant starting them, although this wouldn't do it anyway because it's got that delay before it applies the high voltage. But yeah, it goes to show this is a very gentle ballast. Lamps probably last longer on it than, uh, than with a modern electronic ballast. So the fact that this ballast is rated for anything between the F17T8 and the F32T8 tells me that it'll run any lamp within that arc voltage range perfectly fine. So let's try it with an F40T12. And uh, I'm going to use a very unique F40T12. I got this lamp... A long time ago, back when the ReStore was still selling fluorescent lamps. It's a Sylvania Daylight Deluxe F40DX. Very unique color indeed, not common. Uh, 2004, I think, is the date code for this lamp. So, let's see how this ballast powers it. Oh, it doesn't. Uh... It would appear that this cathode is not connected for some reason. Let's try that again. Oh, interesting. Why isn't it starting it? It should have started it very easily. Is it just a grounding issue? So obviously this ballast is a little less forgiving. Um, so usually uh, with any rapid start ballast, magnetic or electronic, um, you really need a good grounding source across the lamp to help ignite the arc. Um, but of course I have the cover off of this fixture right now and that's probably why it's probably not getting a good enough grounding to start. Let me just uh, put the fixture cover on really quick and then see if it'll start. All right, let's try this now. There we go. Kind of a nice color from this lamp. It, it looks mostly like an ordinary daylight, but Daylight Deluxe has a better color rendering. But yeah, started this lamp nicely once I gave it a grounding source. I never run this lamp, uh, so it's probably a little bit on the uh, stale side, which is why it wouldn't start easily. It's not very bright. Um, of course, F40T12 wants a lot more current than an F32T8. Uh, so what's our power here? 22 watts. So yeah, we're we're uh, <laughs> we're doing better than a than a radionic uh, residential grade magnetic ballast. Um, but yeah, it's okay if if uh, if this was the ballast you had and you didn't need a whole lot of light, this would be fine. And because of that preheating before it starts, I don't think there's damage to the lamp. Um, I would assume that the ballast uh, keeps the cathodes preheated a little bit, uh, even after the lamp has started. So it should. So the amount of underdriving going on here shouldn't reduce the life of the lamp. How about a 34 watt lamp? Oh, no problem at all. The lamp is, don't know if you can see this, I think you can, the lamp is striating a little bit. But no, no big issue, that'll calm down. Power is 18 watts. 
with a 0.15 amp line current. She's pretty dim. <laughs> but that's to be expected when it's a uh, F32 T8 ballast. So my multimeter is capable of measuring high frequency voltage and current. So I've just got it tapped into one end of the lamp and there is constant cathode preheating. It's doing about 2.8 volts, which is great. Uh, I've measured that when the lamp is started, the voltage is briefly about 5 to 6 volts. So there is definitely extra cathode preheating going on before uh, the high voltage is applied across the lamp. That's great. And uh, with no lamp connected, the voltage uh, across the cathode pins is 12 volts. But yeah, nice to see that constant cathode preheating. That indeed means that you can run an F40 T12 or any lamp on this ballast that would be underdriven by it. And it's not going to harm the lamp because uh, the cathodes are always heated to their proper temperature. So that's great. That frequency, by the way, about 33 kilohertz. Here's another 34 watt lamp to test, but this one is nearing the end of its life and it actually has a blown cathode. Uh, I pulled this one out of the one of the kitchen lights above me because it wouldn't start anymore. However, I found that uh, when I tried to kill the lamp using the full ham workhorse too, it actually works just fine. There's just enough emission material on this broken cathode still. And this cathode is still in fine shape still that it just ran normally on the full hand workhorse too. So I've actually been using this lamp in this fixture in the office room to light the office room. Because I want to see how much longer it'll run when it's basically being forced to run into the ground on an electronic ballast. But I want to see if it'll run on this ballast too. And the answer is yes. Ooh, the ballast made kind of a kind of a ringing noise for a second there. Let me see if it'll do that again. Yeah, it makes a bit of a ringing noise. It just must be because of the uh, just because the lamp's not in great shape. The arc voltage is probably really high when it starts off, so it kind of stresses the ballast a little bit. Other than that, it seems to be running fine. Wattage is 23 watts. So, not bad. It, this ballast runs this lamp maybe just a hair dimmer than the full ham. I think the full ham was able to push 26 watts through it or so. But yeah, that's cool. And of course, the full ham being an instant start ballast, just kind of brute force starts the lamp of high voltage. At least this is preheating the one functioning cathode still so maybe I'll keep this ballast in this fixture for now and I'll use it with this lamp and uh we'll just see how much longer this lamp will run on this ballast that would be cool I'm gonna do one more test here and that's with an F15 T8 which should have only a slightly lower voltage than the F17 T8 that is this thing's minimum lamp size it's rated to run now, I'm particularly interested because this particular F15 T8 has a defect in the gas fill, which makes it pretty much impossible to start on a preheat ballast uh, when it hasn't been running for a long time. I can only get it to start on the full ham workhorse too. But once it's been running and once you put it into normal use, it works just fine. But I'm curious to see if this ballast will be able to strike it. Let's find out. And the answer is no. What if I give it some more grounding? Oh, there we go. I ran my hand across it and that gave it enough grounding. And uh, it's running. And it's not flickering or anything. And wattage is a little less than 13 watts. So it is powering the lamp with an optimal amount of current. Uh, it does, however, mean that uh, the lamp is probably a little shorter than the minimum uh, recommended to run on this ballast. So I don't think an F15 T8 is uh, something you should run on this ballast long term, just in case it ever harms the ballast long term. 
Well, that's about all there is to show of the Sylvania rebranded Motorola electronic rapid start ballast for T8 lamps. I've got to say, this is a pretty cool ballast. It's been very cool to play with today. Uh, very cool example of an early mains powered electronic ballast. And I've always wanted one of these Motorola made ballasts just because I've always heard that they're genuinely nice ballasts. And indeed, that's what we've seen today. I am going to install this in the shop light and I'm going to use it to run that 34 watt lamp that has a blown cathode and uh, see how it runs on this ballast long term and, and what it does when that lamp inevitably comes to the end of its life. I would really like to get uh, the T12 version of this ballast. Uh, unfortunately, the T12 version of Motorola ballasts are not nearly as common to come across as the T8 versions. Uh, of course, back, back when these ballasts were being made, if you needed a ballast for T12 lamps, you were just going to get a magnetic ballast. They were the standard of the time, they worked fine, and they were probably cheaper than these ballasts were. So, while T12 versions exist, uh, they're pretty hard to come across. Uh, looking on eBay while I'm making this video, there's a few 277 volt versions on eBay, but no 120 volt single lamp versions. I think there's one 120 volt three lamp version, but I'm not interested in that. So yeah, not common to come across, but hopefully I'll find one someday. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed looking at a mundane, but at least slightly interesting electrical thing. I certainly enjoyed looking at it. And I will see you next time in a future video.